Imagine someone broke into your house. No smashed windows, nothing out of place, nothing appears out of the ordinary. But the criminals made copies of all your keys for everything you own, had a good look in all of your drawers, including those ones upstairs in your bedroom and bathroom, perhaps even took photographs of anything they thought was interesting or compromising, then proceeded to steal your most valuable items. OK, this is not a pleasant thing to think about, but let, let's push it a step further. Imagine in that same scenario that you just didn't notice anything wrong, that the person who'd entered your property just kept coming and going all the time, listening in on your private conversations, recording them, watching over your shoulder and waiting, and that you had no idea they were even there. When it comes to cybercrime, this is very much how things play out. Someone gets access to your network, they play around, they hunt for stuff that's useful, valuable, that gets them in deeper, that lets them hide unnoticed. And when they steal your secrets, they leave your original data behind, so you don't even realise that anything's gone. Does it sound fanciful? Or perhaps are you still judging cyber risks according to outdated assumptions? Maybe you think it's just big corporations that are attacked, the ones with high visibility. Well, according to Accenture, 43% of attacks last year were against SMBs, the kinds of organisations that have much less concentrated resources to defend themselves. In fact, the same report says that only 14% of those SMBs feel prepared to defend themselves, which is like saying that you keep all your valuables in a house where the Doors and windows are left wide open all the time and that you can live with a risk. So can we say that well-funded security teams are on top of all of this and have a full picture of what is going on? Ready, alert, vigilant. Well, it could be that these teams are all of those things. But the hackers are still getting in and worse, they're getting away with it. Research by IBM and the Ponemon Institute last year reported that on average it took security teams 287 days to identify and contain a data breach. Which is almost laughable. If a thief's got a couple of hundred days to execute a robbery, I'm really not sure what the containment part of the operation really means. They got what they wanted. Your data was exfiltrated, copied, sold on, used against you. Now, we could say that risk management is two disciplines brought together. One side is prevention management, the activity to stop bad things from happening. And the other side is consequence management, the efforts to stop risk events from running out of control and triggering increasingly bad outcomes. Security strategies which focus only on prevention are likely to be ineffective and expensive in the long run. A summary of projects undertaken by the penetration testing company Positive Technologies amongst large businesses and government organisations concluded that 93% of them could be breached by an external hacker within two days. And remember, if they've got a couple hundred more days to burrow into the systems and networks, they can find your crown jewels and they can make themselves extremely difficult to remove entirely. There's even a cybersecurity term for this issue. They're called Advanced Persistent Threats, or APTs. Well-funded teams of hackers, often working as proxies for nation-states with aggressive hybrid warfare programmes, attack networks. They're given government-researched hacking tools and exploits to use, as well as permission to steal as much information as they want, which they can then monetize to fund themselves. In return for this nurturing and sponsorship, the hacking teams provide access to systems, databases, critical infrastructure, so that they can be shut down, wiped out or corrupted at a moment's notice as an act of deniable warfare. A very recent example. On October the 8th, 2022, the entire railway system in the north part of Germany was shut down for several hours due to a coordinated physical and virtual attack on the wireless communication system handling of the railway traffic. The malicious and targeted saboteurs were able to identify with pinpoint precision 
the exact equipment in two different locations, two different cities, that had to be destroyed. And security analysts noticed how this incident followed the destruction of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline in the Baltic Sea just days before. And they concluded that previously opaque and deniable attacks had been carried out in a much more open and aggressive way, perhaps signalling retaliation for international sanctions. Either way, geopolitical risks are spilling over into commercial IT systems management, and these risks are like never before. A 2019 EU-funded briefing paper on the challenges to effective cyber security policy made this comment. Well-founded, continuous threat and risk assessments are important tools for public and private organisations alike. However, there is no standard approach to classifying and mapping cyber threats or to risk assessments, meaning assessments considerably vary in their quality. Frankly speaking, many organisations are winging their information risk assessments, not having a reliable methodology for identifying what their most precious data is or who has access to it during its life cycle. Having people with the skills to identify threats to our information systems and prioritise both preventative and responsive risk actions has to be a priority as we accelerate into the digital age. It's for this reason that the IRM are building out their courses that deal with these issues. Industry 4.0 sees the convergence of massive sensor proliferation, the internet of everything, machine learning, pervasive computing power and the dominance of big data, with huge opportunities for innovation and growth. But make no mistake, the systems which host all of this are vulnerable. My name is Richard Cross and I'll be delighted to welcome you on our course looking at effective digital risk management.